yes, yes, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of the Cliff Notes Podcast. Available everywhere you get your podcasts. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, um, Spotify, Pandora. It's like everywhere, everywhere, everywhere except title. And I'm still, I'm still working on, I'm still working on that, man. This is a special episode of the Cliff Notes Podcast. Every once in a while, I have an opportunity to, to share content with both of my audiences. Um, or a couple of my audiences. And so this is another one where we're going to do a, a, a cross-pollination situation. So if you are listening to this on the Fitness is a Habit podcast and you know that it's just another aspect of, of what I do with, with DJ Click Productions and the whole nine, man. Um, this is a this is a, a, a interview that, I, it's funny when I was thinking about it, I talked about doing like years ago. And, um, you know, now here we are and I have an opportunity to, to chop it up with somebody who... I am a fan of in terms of the work that that's being done for um, like for communities, man, work that's that's impacting the planet in a really big way. And um, and like she's she's kind of the homie, too. So it's, it's really dope to have her on here. So I'm bringing her up right now. The homie here live on the Cliff Notes podcast slash the fitness is a habit podcast. Kayla Jury what's good. Hi. Uh- I'm so excited to be here with you today. This is so much fun. Dude, dude. Like I said, it's been a long time coming and it's really been mm-hmm. cool to watch, um, to just watch your journey and, and and what you've done and sort of where you are now and just the the impact. The, one of the cool one of the big things I'm I'm excited to talk about is just the impact that you've seen of from what you've done thus far. But mm, yes. before we get into all of that, let's just go back, man. So um I met you, I don't even know, man, like. A long time ago. Yeah, like several years ago, probably five. Six I was going to say, yeah, at least five. Yeah, yeah. Um, th- uh, I was, I connected with, with your, with your, I was about to say better half, your other half. Well, uh, I consider him my better half, so that's <laughs> fine. That's fine. I, I'm good with that. Jay Jerry came through um, uh, and did an interview um, for the Cliff Notes podcast. And you and and you came through and 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 hung out and we had an opportunity to talk a little bit and you were sharing with me then some of the stuff that you were doing and I was like yo I should do an interview with you <laughs> so now here we are all these years later um, it is really amazing to think about like when we think about that long ago that was when Whole Human was very first starting and when I was beginning my business so yeah when you're kind of talking about growing the impact from then to now. I haven't really thought about that specific chunk of time before, but that's really fun. Yeah. So, you know, I guess just with that, looking back now on um, what you thought about doing and then where you are, and we're going to dive a little bit deeper into it, but um, does it feel like this is what you anticipated doing? Does it feel like this is what you envisioned it would be? I love that question. I don't think anybody's actually asked me that before. Well, it actually yeah, doesn't. Like you, you on Cliff Notes, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> um, it actually doesn't. I would say that it's better. So I think when I first started building Whole Human, it was going to be focused a lot on performance and the physical body a lot, but with mindset added into it. And it has shifted so much to truly be super just whole life encompassing for all of my students and all of my clients who come through. And so it's, to me, that's so much rewarding, so much more rewarding. It's so much better to be able to like really dive into people's brains and not only affect their body, their health, their performance, but also like my students come to me and they're like, oh, because of what we do together, I have better communication with my partner or I was brave enough and had the confidence to go get this new promotion or this new job. And, you know, I have single women who are buying homes and they're like, just have courage and confidence and they're applying what we do to so many other places. So it's way better than I imagined it would be. That's what's up, man. All right. So mm-hmm. for people who are, who are tapping in and we're, we're talking about this, this, this really amazing um, product that you've built for people who don't know what is whole human. So Whole Human is honestly the place where anybody can come and get coaching and support to reach any goal that they want to reach in their lives. Um, So I am an expert educator. So I was a teacher, curriculum developer, and now become a master coach. And I've been able to put those things together to 
teach you how to basically coach yourself. And that's the cool thing about Whole Human is a lot of people come in very health centered. That's how it all really started. Um, but they leave because it's not a diet. It's a way to coach yourself. It's a way to create the life that you want that fits all the things that you love and takes you on the path where you want to go. And then it's sustainable and it's the last coach you'll ever need because you end up being able to do it on your own and keep it forever. So it's really, really fun. No doubt. So how did you go from um, how did you go from being who who you are and what you've done for your journey into then coaching others? Mm. Mm. I love in general, just, <clears throat> excuse me, just experience, right? For myself. And so when I was teaching before, I taught for a decade before I started my own business. And so with that, and with all of the skills that I was learning through that, my degrees that I got through that, all of my extra certifications I got through that, and my experience in just positive behavior change with students and then teachers I taught um, at Oregon State at the collegiate level and then was also training teachers through the district, uh, through the state actually. And so I was able to really figure out through that how to dive into people's brains and find what motivates them and help them evaluate themselves and help them be motivated to make choices in what I call positive momentum. Um, because when we're excited about something or we think positive thoughts about something, it's so much easier to roll out of bed and keep doing that thing. And so to help people build that is something that I'd really experienced. And in teaching as well, the curriculum that I, that I developed that um, is, to my knowledge, still used in some areas in the Portland metro area and down in Salem, um, was a science curriculum that also built life skills. So I basically, through that, was able to say, okay, yeah, we have a science lesson where we're going to, you know, kids are going to build a house and then we're going to have a flood come through and they're going to have to rebuild the house, you know, and to practice all of those things. But through that, they learn so many different things, perseverance and um, resiliency and critical thinking and being a critical cons consumer of the world and their thoughts and the things and the choices that they're making around them. And so through teaching, I kind of learned how to have a sort of conduit of the thing that motivates, like no student is going to be like, yeah, life skills lesson day. They're like, no, we're building a house day. Right. So just like my students who come in now that are adults, they're not coming in saying really kind of what I described to you is, you know, I help people edit their patterns. They're not like, help me edit my patterns. <laughs> they're like, help me run a marathon or help me lose 20 pounds. And that's the conduit to teaching them how to coach themselves. And so how it kind of started in health was I'm just into fitness in general. And I've done so much, which I do think makes me rather unique as a coach in the industry. So I was a runner, a big runner. Um, you know this. Yeah. Uh, I've run 12 marathons. I can't even count the other distance races, the relays, things like that. I loved it. And I was very self-studied in it. Then when I met John, he was an athlete or Jay Jury, as you introduced him and how everybody but me calls him. <laughs> but um, <laughs> uh, but, <clears throat> but then after that, when I met him, he was like, running's my punishment because he was a basketball player. So he taught me how to lift weights. And I can't do anything at just like the relaxed, calm level. So I was like, is there more you could do with this? Can you compete with this? So then I started competitive bodybuilding. Then I decided I didn't like that so much. Um, well, I liked it, but there were parts about it that I was like, this isn't perfect and fitting for my life. So then I went into and started doing, uh, the elite heats for Spartan racing, which I felt like was a blend. And so I just am always trying to do something. And as my own fitness journey kind of went through that, everybody's like, what is she doing? Like, can she teach me how to do it? And so I just kind of, even while I was still teaching formally, people would ask me for advice and I'd be making people plans or, doing, I don't know, just different like one-off things for different people. And eventually my friends were like, you should get paid to do this. And that's kind of how the whole coaching thing was born. That's so, that's so, so dope. You know, and the, so, you know, you always, you always consider how you see things through, through your lens. And so when we met and then um, just through the world of social media, I had an opportunity to, to sort of watch that. And then actually, um, happened to be in at a, at an event that you were at a running event 
that I did not do the same distance that you did. So I was done way earlier than you were just because my distance was so much shorter. But at any rate, sort of watching that, I, you know, you, you sort of think, yeah, with everything that you share, everything that you put out there, I would assume what you just described, people saw that and tapped in. It was like, yo, I want to, I want to do that because that's a part of why that, what I do, right? You see people who are doing things and achieving things and having successes that you want to achieve. And so you reach out to them and you say, yo, mm -hmm. like, how do I do that? Um, the, the transition though, from seeing the things that you, that worked for you and that you were successful at and, 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 and understanding how to get there and building out that plan then to offer it to someone else and say, okay, yeah, this is the plan. This is how it works. And then having to transition and navigate to, oh, but that may not, like it doesn't, my, whatever the case may be, mindset or motivation or, mm -hmm. or just successes. Was that challenging at all? I don't want to sound like just that I'm over proud or confident in myself, but it wasn't. And the reason this is, I think normally, yes, it would, but my education background made it not challenging because when all, like for instance, my curriculums were inquiry-based, so they're all about me asking questions first to find out where people are. Mm -hmm. And so, and I think that's what's really different for a lot of other coaches and health and fitness um just like trainers and stuff in the industry is they just say, here's a plan, take yeah. it, follow it. And that would be like, oh, this is what worked for me or here, take it, follow it. And I don't do that at all. Yeah. I ask you questions and I give options and I, and all of my students have buy-in too. So I'm just like, well, what sound, like, what do you think you will like? Here are three different possibilities. And then we go and we try them on and then we come back and we call and we reflect on it and we say, I liked part of it. I didn't like this part. And I'm like, okay, then let's fix the part you didn't like. And then we end up with a solid plan because it is truly 100% all based on what they like. Because otherwise I just say all the time, what's the point? What's the point of just doing a bunch of stuff that is not fun that you don't enjoy? Yeah. Yeah. It's um, one of the things that I did that that you do is you you have a way uh, um you have a way to what you just expressed really really comes across that it is a it is a conversation it's not a it's not a i'm the person who knows everything and just do what mm -hmm. i say i mean it truly comes across as not like we're in this together and i mm -hmm. love the fact that you call it the whole human community because it comes across as just that as community people mm -hmm. building into um, one another. And those successes, um, I can imagine, come from that. So in terms of successes, thus far on the journey, is there, what are you surprised about in terms of how things have, how things have evolved, how things have developed, or a success that makes you go, wow, like, that's really, really cool. I didn't see that happening. I think the things that I love the most that feel like so much success is anytime anybody says, this is exactly what I need. And then they come in and they're like, oh, wow, wait, yes, this is exactly what I need. That feeling to be able to provide for somebody, like you said, community, thinking about their mindset, really, truly caring about them as a person versus just a number of like how many calories you're eating today or whatever their goal could be, how much weight you're pushing this week, right? or, you know, how they're working towards other goals. Like there's a big difference in me being able to sit and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with my students. And I've coached my students through so much heavy stuff. Even just this year, one of my students' um, partners was diagnosed with cancer. One of my students was in a very intense car accident. Another one was in a car accident that put her in a concussion where she couldn't even like go to work for a while, right? I've done coach through losses and things like that. And that's the kind of stuff and that relationship building that I don't know if it's a surprise, but it's never lost on me mm -hmm. that I get the opportunity to help walk people through tough things in life and still feel good in their body and their mind mm -hmm. that I, and I teach them and show them and guide them and support them through like a lot of times when tough stuff like that happens. I mean, we've all, Kind of experience that where you know then you're like okay well i'm eating like six tubs of ben and jerry's and just crying on my couch right i show them how we can feel and like i can feel sad i can struggle 
And, and so I think the way that whole human is developed to have that depth is not lost. I mean, I appreciate that. And I thank my students every single time, every time they share, um, because I am thankful and I do feel so honored to be able to be like in their brain and part of their life. So I, I would say that that's it. That's so dope, man. As so in terms of the, in terms of the, the fitness is a habit lifestyle brand that I, that I came up with for me, it was figuring out something that I could tap into as a, almost a, almost a journaling situation for myself, but then also a way to share that with other people to hopefully be an influence on others. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, and for me, fitness is a habit is, um, it's sort of a, it's a number of things. It's physical fitness. Um, it's mental fitness. And then it's, it's my spiritual walk. It's my spiritual journey. And folk who listen to this may or may not know that like my nine to five is physical therapy. And so that's like healthcare is like, that's what, that's my, that's my primary profession. And so thinking about what you just described and, and really helping people reach whatever their goals are is, um, is something that, that resonates with me. But, um, also having a, 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 a place where people feel comfortable tapping in because they can see, mm -hmm. oh, you're, you're actually on the journey. You're showing me your, your struggles. You're, you're showing me the obstacles that you um, are overcoming. You're showing me that like there, there is no such thing as perfection. And I bring that up mm -hmm. because one of the things that I really dig is that you are very transparent. You are very open. You are very like, now nah, this is this this is who I am. Like really, the whole body, the whole whole thing. Was that is that just a part of who you are? Was that something that you thought about? Hey, if I'm going to do this, I want to make sure that I put that out there. Is that challenging to do it all for you? Um, I am so thankful that you said that because I feel so like oh good that is how it comes across. Mm -hmm. I do want to be that person, and it's funny. I was just talking to another student this this week about, do I need to show more failures? Like, I think I need to tell everybody about how I failed in the past because I don't want people to feel alone that, you know, we all learn from failures and it's all part of life. And so I do strive to show what it's really like. And I just want to be genuine because I think I love social media in the way that like, you just meet the coolest people. I just met somebody. I don't even know where she lives. I think she lives in like Kentucky, but I was able to ask her questions about <clears throat> like whiskey and all sorts of things that I don't know anything about. And I'm like, this is so cool. I just randomly found you and here we are being friends online. So social media is very cool, but it can also be a very hard place. And a lot of my students see that too, where it's like, okay, well, look at everybody in their perfect lives. How come I'm not like that? And so I really just strive for reality. And I think when we talk about community and you kind of already said this is you have to be comfortable in order to like enter it and to be vulnerable. And I want my students and I want the people in my audience. I consider everybody part of the community. If you're on, if you follow me on Instagram, you're part of the community. You don't have to be a paid like student of mine to be part of the community. Yeah. And I want everybody to be able to feel like they can be open, that they can share with me in my DMs, that they can talk to me and that they're willing and ready. And the only way to do that, I think is to model it Yeah. and kind of show it. No doubt. Um, let's talk about the podcast. <sighs> Oh, I know. <laughs> As I sat down here, I was just like, oh, I'm so familiar with using a microphone now. <laughs> and it's so fun to, after doing my own podcast for so long, which I've fallen in love with it in a way I never thought I would. Mm -hmm. um, but it's so fun to be on somebody else's podcast. <laughs> so that's really cool. Um, I listened through, I listened through a, a number of episodes and um, of course I had to, I had to tap in with, um, the episode that you had John on that I really, 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 really dug. Um, and it made me think about an episode of the fitness is a habit podcast that I did with Merlene. And it was interesting because you asked him, like, was he nervous? You, you, you had some, some questions for him and I don't want to give it all away. I want people to go listen to it, but, um, you didn't give him any sort of, Hey, this is, you know, this is what we're going to talk about this at the third. And I remember doing that with Merlene, um, my wife and, after and she was super nervous, right? And then afterwards, she was like, "Okay, wait, I want to do it again, but this time I want to." You know, she had all of these plans. Mm -hmm. um, as you are delving into doing the podcast and 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 um, and doing these episodes, um, have you had that moment of, "Oh man, I put a, I put an episode out, and now I've got all these these new ideas and these new concepts and these new 
man, I wish I would have done it this way. And then having the platform to actually do that. So that's so funny because actually, yes, just this morning, I was like, oh, there was one sentence. I recorded two episodes yesterday. There was one sent. I was like, oh, I meant to say that one like sentence that I feel like could be important. Mm -hmm. um, and then I did a very vulnerable episode um, about myself. So it was a Q and A. I, I opened up my Instagram and said, um, it, wh whatever questions you have about me, I'm going to do a Q&A podcast. And I got a ton of questions and I kind of split them into health and fitness um, and goal setting questions. And then uh, there were three questions that were about me, but one of them was super heavy. And it was, um, how has your childhood uh, made you stronger? Or because I they, the person who asked the question had said, I know that you've shared a few times that your childhood was a struggle. How has that made you stronger? Or how have you not let it define you? And so after recording that episode, all I could think about the whole time was like, should I have said this? Should I have said that? Should I have said this? Do I need like a, some sort of like disclaimer or, you know, just as like that big vulnerability hangover. Um, and I was like, it was already 45 minutes long. And if I, if I'm talking about my life, like I'm 35 years old, it's, you can't squeeze that into 45 nope. minutes. It's fine, Kayla. It's fine. It's right. fine. Right. Um, but I love doing in that. And that episode with John was so special. So special. And to ask him those hot seat questions mm -hmm. and him answer. And I was just like, oh, I just felt so much love from him also. <laughs> because the for those who haven't heard it yet, the episode is on um, supporting your partner. And how do you support your partner with your goals and things? And so it was just really, really nice. I oh, liked it. Oh. So, you know, it's, and it's one of the things that I've always thought was really cool. And, and again, for me, it goes back to um, when we met, like we met because I was doing an interview with, with, with Jay and you came through mm -hmm. and, and on another occasion, he came to the radio station to do an interview and you came through and um, at the Cliff Notes, the Cliff Notes Live, you came through at the mm -hmm. album release, you were there. And so I say all that to say it's always been I've always appreciated how much you have been in support of everything that I've seen him do that I've had a, I've had been blessed to be a part of and then to listen to that episode and hear you guys talk about that that he reciprocates that as you're mm -hmm. on this journey on as you're building your business as you're making changes in the community I mean that's so that's so special so big ups to you for putting it out there that way um, to let folk know that you don't have to, whatever you're doing, you don't have to do it alone. You can mm -hmm. be in partnership with one another and support one another and not be in competition with one another. So, you know, just, just thank you for putting that out there. Oh yeah, of course. And I think one of the things that, um, that was really great about that episode specifically, and just about supporting our partners is I think people, again, this kind of goes back to what people see on social media is they just see a relationship and assume that it just comes so easy and so naturally. But in that episode, we were like, no, we literally sit down, look at the calendar and say, okay, when can you do music? And when can I do this? And I'm going to plan this not around like a music heavy thing for you. Like we are really thoughtful about making that happen. And I think people kind of forget that there is some quote unquote, like work or thoughtfulness involved. And it, I think it does come natural to John and I to care about each other, yeah. but like, the world is busy. We're busy people. So we really have to be thoughtful about it. And I think that's something that a lot of people overlook or can yeah. overlook. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. But another thing about community that you kind of said, having a supportive partner is so important. And I think there are a lot of people who maybe don't know how to communicate their support that they want to have, mm -hmm. but feel alone in a lot of their goals that they have. And that's another thing, as you've kind of spoken about community this whole time with whole human that I love so much. So I guess thinking about what is also a surprise is I love when I log in on like a Monday, we have a community Slack channel. And no matter if somebody's a private coaching client or if somebody's in my course or if somebody's in my group program, which are my three offers right now, everybody's in the same channel. Mm. And they are just like dropping recipes or asking questions or talking to each other. It's my favorite thing when they're all just like cheering each other on or somebody was like, hey, like, I feel like I drank too much yesterday. I don't know what to do, you know, right? And everybody's just dropping their ideas and their thoughts and their encouragement. And it's a really beautiful space and a really beautiful thing to 
be able to walk into a program and have that. Just this week, we had a group call this last Wednesday, and one of my students was talking about <clears throat> how she wants to start being a early morning early morning riser. She wants to start waking up, and two of the other students on the call wake up crazy ass time in the morning. Like one of them wakes up at three thirty. <laughs> and the other one wakes up at 4.30. Uh -huh. And so I was like, well, I know two people that can help you. And so they started an accountability like thread in our Slack channel. And I was just like, that's so cool. And they all live completely far away from each other. And they would never be able to do that if they didn't have this community because they don't, they're not near each other. And because her friends that are close to her don't wake up early. So she doesn't have that kind of group. So social media, internet is freaking cool. Yeah. Yeah. So as you're as you're building this, do you do you have do you have you taken time to um, look at just that situation and recognize what you have done? And what I mean by that is I think sometimes when we're in it and we're doing things, um, we're just thinking about this. I, you know, I'm doing this because I love it. I'm doing this because I'm passionate about it. But then sometimes I and, you know, Kayla, I'm a. I got a couple years on you. I've been on the planet a little bit longer. So I just have that perspective of being able to look back and not realizing the, like the paths that you've created, the opportunities that you've created and celebrate that. Not that you're, you know, blowing your own horn, not that you're whatever, but you, you know, sometimes those things can be encouraging when, when you need that encouragement or, or just to celebrate that, what you're doing is is making a huge difference on the planet. I love to celebrate. I love to celebrate every single day. <laughs> Do I maybe celebrate my accomplishments enough? Maybe not. Or maybe like, or even specifically think of, you know, it, it's a little bit hard. And okay, I have like six thoughts on this, but <laughs> it's a little bit hard to, like you said, blow your own horn or whatever. For a lot of people, it's difficult. And it's harder to do that without kind of someone like you saying that, right? And so when someone else acknowledges it, I'm just like, oh yeah, this is pretty cool. Like this is pretty amazing. But without that, I just be like, oh, I'm so happy this is happening, but I don't necessarily say I'm or realize I'm so happy it's happening because of me or because I've created this space. Like I literally just said, the internet's amazing. Right. Not I created a space on the internet for these people to meet each other and introduce right. them. Right. And so I will say that. And my secondary thought that came with that, and this is just a total tangent, but a lot of people feel like external motivation and validation is not a good thing, but it absolutely is. Because if you think about this moment right here, that external validation helps me see even deeper the what whole human is. And without that, it is important. I think so many people think they have to be intrinsically motivated only by them own selves. I'm like, no, 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 no. If you are getting a compliment from somebody else who tells you you're beautiful, take it, right. run with it, love it, write it down on a piece of paper and save it. Like that totally counts too. And so thank you for saying that. That does give me some extra celebration that I could have today. <laughs> um, it, As people, so we, we, I, we, I talked about the podcast, but let people know how like, how do they, how do they find the podcast? How do they listen? How do they mm. tap in? Ooh, this is new for me to say things like this. Cause usually I just link it on my Instagram, but it's just the whole human podcast. I believe you could search that on Apple and or Spotify. Unlike you, I think those are the only two things that I'm on. <laughs> if I'm somewhere else, I don't know about it. Okay. We're going to, we're going to work <laughs> but they're automatically we're gonna get them out there. We're going to get them out there for sure. Um, and listening yeah. to the podcast. One of the things that I appreciate is you you give you give your listeners you give us content you give us information and then you give us something to work on like tangibly mm -hmm. like literally this is your homework um yep. where does that idea come from and then i want to tell you why i appreciate that it comes from what's so important is especially now we consume 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 and knowledge and i love consuming i love reading you can't see it but on this whole side is my library just full of books i love to read i love to learn if i could have been a lifelong student i absolutely would but we gain skill and gain strategy by applying what we learn and so often we consume without application and then it doesn't necessarily 
become as beneficial as it could be. And I try to, and you can tell me, I would love your feedback on this, but I try to make the application piece something very simple that you can do in one day or immediately to break the barrier of like, oh, well, I don't have 48 minutes to do that today. I'm like, nope, like 38 seconds, let's get it done and help grow your mind and move your mind in that way. So that's why, because application is just so important. What are your thoughts though? You know, I, I agree. I, and, and that that is how it comes across. It's, it, it's, it's tied directly into the content that you share. And I love that you do it that way because it is, it's literally fresh in your mind. Mm -hmm. It does come in, in very, what, what feels to be very doable um, pieces. And then the, the next thing to me that comes from that is, you know, I can, I can, I did that thing. Okay. Now what's next? Right. And I want to tap back into the podcast and say, okay, now, you know, what is she going to ask me to do next time? Which I really, really love from a, from a content creator standpoint. One of the things that I really love about it is that it gives, it really gives your audience purposeful engagement. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. anybody who creates content, you put the content out there and depending on what it is, sometimes you're not quite sure, like, are people tapping in? Is it resonating with folk? Are they, no, you're, you're actually giving us, no, like this is engagement. This is not, I'm not, I'm not preaching to you. We're mm -hmm. having, we're having a, a give and take. We're having, um, it's, it is, it's communication. It's back and forth. And I really, um, I really love that. And I think that you, you, you doing that the way that you've done it. Um, it's really dope. Ah, oh, I love that. I think what's really interesting is moving into owning my own business and having to be a content creator. I was like, I am not a content creator. That was my very first like big thing. I was like, I don't do that. And so, so often I just have to say, okay, Kayla, take it all back to what you are an expert at. And I'm like, I am an expert teacher. Like I am so good at educating. I'm an expert educator. So how, if there were 27 people in my classroom, how would I do this? And so that's how I just try to kind of reframe everything. And that's what makes it feel doable and makes me feel confident in anything that I put out ever is I'm like, just go back to where you do feel confident because there were times and I'm also a good student in the way that I've had multiple different business coaches. And if they tell me to try something, I will go try it. I will try it on. I will experience it. And then I will be like, that does not fit me. And I will take it <laughs> off and I'll put it away. So I will say in growing whole human in the first I mean, I guess now, yeah, it's been years and years, but in the beginning, I was just trying so many different things that I didn't feel, I don't know what the right word is, maybe aligned with how it was coming out. I, I felt like I was always genuine. I felt like I was always me, but I was just trying on so many different strategies and going back to, okay, here's your homework and here's your application and just riffing on the whole education and teacher thing. Like my program's called Whole University. Mm -hmm. um, just so, so just, dope. like y'all got to see the way it's written out. It's just so, so clever. Oh yeah. You, Y-O-U, <laughs> university. Um, but, and that's, I just realized stay in your strength stay in like what you're great at and everything else just it flows so much easier. So whenever I feel like I'm having a content struggle, I go back and say, okay, if you were making a mini lesson right now for your students, that's why I even call my clients, my students, because it's just so much more helpful. How wow. would this go? What would this be like? What do they need to hear? Put it out there. Wow. That's so dope. Um, mm -hmm. Do you, do you feel, so now this is a question from, from someone else who, who, who creates content, right? Mm-hmm. Do you feel challenged? I actually don't say it that way. How do you how do you stay consistent? Like I'm asking this question, and I have mm. my my knowing you, knowing what you've done, knowing what you've achieved. I have my thought of what the answer would be. But how do you stay consistent, creating content on a regular basis, putting it out there on a regular basis? I feel like consistent feels subjective. Mm -hmm even though it's not really a subjective term. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, just because there's sometimes where I'm like, okay, is consistency seven feed posts plus a podcast a week plus two emails? So that's about what I'm doing right now is five um, Instagram feed posts. I'm on my story every single day. I do a podcast a week and I send two emails a week. So when I say that, that's actually kind of a lot. Yes, but I will say <laughs> <laughs> in order to build that consistency, I started way smaller than that, like just Instagram. And then got used to doing more Instagram. So I actually, this is for my students, one of the big things about creating consistency is I 
call the system the next nudge system where you start small and you build on top of it. So once you get really good at one thing, then you go up the next level, up the next level. And so that's kind of what I've done where I started with um, Instagram, getting used to writing the posts, speaking on my story, then adding in being able to do one email a week, then adding in doing two emails a week, then adding in the podcast was definitely like my latest edition. Um, and so I would say small adding over time. But I will also tell you, I am so type A. My calendar's right there. It's completely color coded. And I have automations everywhere where if I put like a to-do list on, I use ClickUp. I don't know if it's like a Monday or a Trello or an Asana. It's like an uh, online, um, it's like an online planner. Mm -hmm. And it's, if I put something in there, like record podcast, podcast, click finish, it'll give me three more tasks to like, go write the show notes, go write an email for it. And so it just automates and tells me what to do after I've built it out. Yeah. So helpful. So I would say <laughs> my type A planning, and then the little next nudge system. Okay, that's, 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 that's really, really cool. I, um, again, though, I, I, I love how I just love the way that you communicate with us, with those who tap into to what to what you do. Um, as I think about just just the life journey i love when you say hey yo plan to do this and if you have a if you have a situation where you feel like oh i didn't do it or oh i did something i didn't want to do okay you did it now keep it pushing but maybe take a moment to ask yourself okay why did i make that choice why what brought me in that and it it, it comes across as like bro it ain't that it ain't that it ain't that serious which can decrease stress it can decrease a sense of of um like beating up on yourself that that, that gets you to go down this you know mm -hmm. this negative path um, and then i also love the fact that you say that you you know if you could be a lifelong student i personally believe we can all mm -hmm. we should have that desire to be lifelong learners right whether it's formal education or whether it's um tapping into podcasts whether it's getting a getting a life coach however whatever works for us in that moment of time Mm -hmm. I feel like, yeah, we should all desire to to never think we all got we got it all figured out and and be OK with not knowing everything. Be, be OK with oh, yeah. not achieving the goal that we set out today, mm -hmm. but know that there's down the road we can still get there. Oh, curiosity is my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. If we ever think we know everything, then we're just not being curious enough. The yeah. world is so big. The universe is huge. Um, but I do want to pop back to that first thing that you said, because I think that's one of my very favorite revelations for all of my students in that there is this disaster chaos spiral that happens when like you eat the piece of cake you weren't planning to eat or you miss the workout that because you were you just didn't feel like going and then you just beat yourself up and because you're beating yourself up then you eat a second piece of cake and then because you're beating yourself up you don't go to the gym again for the rest of the week and then you have to quote unquote start all over and that's one of the biggest revelations that I would say 99.98% of all of my students come in and have is the conversation around that where it isn't a big deal, but not even that. That's not how I start to say it because people feel like it is a big deal, right? And so they're like, but it is a big deal. <clears throat> I didn't want to eat that cake. That feels like a big deal to me. And I say, this is the thing though. Life is never 100%. It's impossible for life when you look at the span, like maybe a day can be 100%. But if you have a week, a month, it's not 100% because so much of life is not under our control, right? So right now the tree that's outside could fall through this house. And then like, right, then maybe I can't go to the gym because a tree fell through my house. Right. That's okay. And so what we plan for is that all the time we're just striving for 80%. And then we plan for 20%. So then what ends up happening is we're striving all the time for our best. And when the 20% happens, because we know it's part of the plan, there's absolutely no guilt. They're like, oh yeah, well, I took last Saturday off, but I felt fine because I was supposed to have a 20%. So that's fine. Mm -hmm. And it's just a different reframe of saying, I know this is going to happen. I am planning for it to happen. It is part of the plan. And that releases so much of that stress that you were talking about mm -hmm. is people plan for a hundred percent all the time. And it just doesn't even make sense. And it's not even necessary. Mm -hmm. It's really not. Yeah. Like we all need a break from everything. 100%. 100%. Mm -hmm. The um, oftentimes the access that people get to us is maybe not the access, the awareness that people have is, is whatever avenue they tap into. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, for me, 
it might be people hear me on the radio or it might be people know of the podcast or see a live event. So that's how they tap in, right? Um, for you, it might be people see that you are um, celebrating an event that you that you completed, uh, <clears throat> a race or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. And they get to know about whole uh, about the, the about the whole human community, and they tap in that way, and that becomes who they like. That's who you are, right? You're the fitness mm-hmm. person. You're the person who runs a lot. You're the person who lifts a lot. Mm-hmm. But then when they get in, now now mind you, this is my perspective, right? But, mm-hmm. but then when they tap in, they realize, oh, it is. It's it's not about the run. It's not about the race. It's so much bigger than that, and. I love the fact that that exists for us, right? Because sometimes I think we as human beings, we focus on just that one thing that we see and we don't realize everything that is involved in that, mm-hmm. in the life lessons, right? So for me, from a fitness standpoint, when I started running several years ago, and you mentioned this on one of your episodes when you talked about um, doing marathons, the 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 way that the 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 work that goes into learning for me learning how to run mm-hmm. the way that that impacted other aspects of my life had no I had no idea that that was going to happen the mental toughness that it takes to just push one more mile or push one more block or whatever the case mm-hmm. may be you know just I mean? to the lamp post like, to the lamp post right, right let me just get right there and I feel like that speaks to kind of what you were talking about right the nudge. Mm-hmm. Um, as you have as you have people coming into the community now, um, have you seen people have that aha moment? Have you seen people have the oh, it's not about what I what I thought it was about. It's so much bigger than that. Yes, but it seems less of an, an aha and more of a development over time. So I'm trying to pinpoint, and I think that. The first thing that a lot of people, hmm, how to phrase this, people come in all the time in any program, like so excited to just be like, hit the ground running. And they don't, they're like, yeah, that lamppost, I'm going to go to 85 lampposts. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, okay, let's just try the lamppost and then take a break (laughs) and see what happens. And then people are like, oh, okay. And at first I think sometimes people come in and they're like, oh, well that was easy. And I'm like, yes, that is what you're missing is you think it's supposed to be hard. And it's not. And that's when they're like, oh, that's right. It's supposed to be easy and enjoyable. So I want to keep doing it. I forgot. I'm supposed to like my life. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's kind of how that aha kind of comes about. And I like one of my uh, students used this quote. And when she said this, I was floored the way she said it. She was like, you know what I realized? Like, this is all easy, like breathing. And I was just like, yes, because it's just being alive, you know, listening to your body and giving your body what it needs. I, I strive for all of my students to get that way. But what's hard is when they see it, they don't see it as a positive. A lot of times they'll come to me and say, am I doing enough? Am I doing enough? And I said, you're yes. And actually you are at exactly the right point where I want you to be because all of the things that you have made have become a habit. And so you don't even notice you're doing them. You're doing all the things just by like walking around. Like it's just as easy as the rest of your life. And so that's kind of how that realization comes. And then I have to help them through it. Cause like, I'm not doing enough. I'm not, it's not hard. It's not hard. I'm like, perfect. Yes. I love that. Here's why that's amazing. Do you want your whole life to be hard? No. Great. Here we are. No doubt. You have won. No doubt. So we are. Um, I don't even I don't even know if I turned the microphones on yet, but we were just talking about um, where we are right now. This time of year, we're recording mm-hmm. this in um, in May of 2023, and um, we are hitting beautiful weather in the Northwest. Mm-hmm. Yes. And you know, it's one of the things that like people who are in my family or my community who don't live here and they think about the Northwest, they think about Portland. Man, doesn't it just rain all the time there? And I always tell people, yo, it really helps me appreciate the sunshine. So this mm-hmm. time of year is my favorite time of year when you get to see the flowers blooming and the sun is out on a more regular basis. Um, The other thing that we're seeing is we now coming out of some craziness, man, we have the opportunity to build together now in Mm. person, we can gather together and we can do things together. And that's one of the other things that you've done in terms of creating community is you've created opportunities for folk to come together. Um, So as we are moving further into warmer weather, what do you have planned? 
Oh, that's so exciting. I love in-person stuff so much. And I actually have gotten kind of some pushback because a lot of the coaching world is online. And a lot of my clients, my clients are all around. Like I have my first client from Australia. And so that's really, really cool. Right, so obviously, international. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, so she obviously can't come to join us, but I still have a large base here. And like I said, anybody who follows my Instagram is part of the community. So they get to come. And so I have, like you said, started doing <clears throat> workshops in person, which is a lot of fun. Um, coming up in person though, I'm trying something really new and really fun. And maybe this will be where I spill the beans, I guess, for the future plans of this. But I have met again, thanks to the interwebs, another coach who's a confidence coach, but she lives in Nebraska. And so I'm actually flying out to Nebraska in a couple of months to help her throw a big event. So we I'll start announcing and stuff on my Instagram soon, but I'm really excited about that to work with her and to build that together because it can be lonely to be a business owner, right? I'm just like, it's me. And then I do have a small team, but they're also not local. And so we're going to do that together. Um, at the end of every year, I started last year for the first year because for obvious reasons, but, um, we have a big graduation celebration. So it's whole university. And so at the end of every year, we'll have an in-person graduation celebration. And last year was small and well, small, there was like 30 some odd people there. But this year, I want to blow that out of the water and make it really special and highlight all of my students and all of the things that they've been doing. So that's coming up too. So those are the two things that I have left. Oh, I'm sorry. And then I'm also doing a workshop this weekend. Actually, I've partnered with Orange Theory and I'm doing a balance workshop for them. And I'm going to be doing one in June as well with um, Therapedia. So I'm not sure if you know who they are, but. That's so dope, man. Yeah. All right. So people are listening to this and they're like, man, this is amazing. I um, I wasn't I wasn't aware of 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 this community. I wasn't aware of, of Coach K and the things that she does. And it's really resonates with me or this is what I've been looking for. How do people tap in? Um, the best place I love is Instagram because you can slide right into my DMs and we can start chatting because again, just like Cliff has been saying, I want to hear from everybody. I love when people share with me, talk to me, and it helps me help you more if that is something that you're interested in. So Instagram, I'm at it's Kayla Jury, J-U-R-Y. Um, and that's probably the best place I have. Also, the podcast would be a great place to start um, and listen and get a vibe, if this isn't enough, of who I am and how I teach, kind of what you were hearing about with the homework. And then I do have a website, but you can go to that if you want. It's wholehumancommunity.com. But Instagram is the place where I hang out the most. So that's what I would say. That's what's up, man. Um, so as you are now... Um you know, celebrating the successes and, and helping others, helping us learn how to celebrate our successes. Um, if there was, if someone was like, okay, I like, what's the, what's the one thing that I can start working on right now? What would that be? That's hard because I don't know exactly who they are and the things they love and what their life is like and what their goals are. But I would say this mm. in general, the things that I see that help people, one of the big goals that people come to me for is they just want to feel more energetic in their life. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to guess a lot of listeners might have that feeling They're like, yeah, I'd like to be able to get out of bed and do lots of things and be productive and sure. enjoy the sunshine that's here. And so the things, <coughs> excuse me, the things that help with that are drinking more water and getting daily movement in. So, and that's where the next nudge system happens. So what I want you to do is I want, and sorry, not you, I'm speaking to listeners. Ah, no you, here's your homework, here's oh, your takeaway, <laughs> here's your action item. I want you to think about and look at how much water are you drinking? So for three days, track it, just figure out what your number is. Maybe you're drinking 40 ounces a day. I want you to do the same thing with your steps. You can look at your phone. If you have a watch that tracks how many steps you're taking. I feel like with people who have jobs where they sit at their desk, 3000 is not far off from what a lot of people take. I want you to add if you're at 40 ounces, go for 60 ounces. That's your next nudge. If you're at 3,000, 4,000 steps, go for 4,000 or 5,000 steps. Add your next nudge. And then do that for a week before you go higher. Remember one lamp post at a time. Then after that, once that becomes normalized, go all the way up. Try to get to 100 ounces and try to get to 7,500 steps. That's where I would say where to start. That's everybody's homework. But you have to start it. The part that you can't skip, so this is a big assignment. The part you can't skip is figuring out where you are now. There it is, man. There it is. See, y'all get that. Y'all get the free, the free like introduction <laughs> to you know to the whole community situation. Um, yo, Kayla, I, I once again, man, I can't, 
I can't express enough how um, how much I appreciate what you're doing. Understand, knowing that you are creating opportunities for people to um, to just to just do better, to just be better, which is what we can all do. There's always there's there's something that we can be better at, and you're creating um, a platform, an atmosphere, a community that we can do that. That's welcoming. That's encouraging. That's that's celebratory, um, and it's and it's easy. So thank uh-huh. you. Yeah, thank you so much for that and sharing that. Like I said, you're making me just, I'm going to go celebrate some more, some extra. And thank you for having me here. This has been so much fun. That's what's up, man. Like I said, it's been a long time coming, um, but now we are here. And um, this is not like, this is not like a, a one-off situation. Like we, like we, we fam. So this is just until, until the next conversation. Yes. Until the next one. Yeah. Yes. All right, y'all. Uh, check, check out Coach K. Um, it's Kayla. Give me the Instagram one more time. Yeah, it's Kayla Jury. It's Kayla Jury on IG, man. Um, tap in and and just you know and and let's just build, man. Let's just build. Um, thank y'all so much for tapping into the Cliff Notes podcast once again, and the Fitness is a Habit podcast available uh, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Um, shout out to Acapella Apparel, the official um, sponsor for the Cliff Notes podcast. Check them out at a k e p e l e dot com, especially this time of year. Dope merch, dope gear. Um, go get you, go get you a tea. Go get you some, you know, some, some, some cool summer, summer wear. Once again, it's acapella apparel, a k e p e l e dot com. Um, big ups to all of the platforms that so that that you can find the, the Cliff Notes podcast on. It's on the X Ray FM podcast network, on the Numbers podcast network. That's the Numbers with a Z, um, and then just everywhere else you listen to podcasts. Fitness is a habit as well. Um, you can check me out at djcliff.com. Um, and then last but never ever least, big ups to the homie, Theory Has It, for creating the official theme song to the Cliff Notes podcast. Actually, that was another question I was going to ask you. The the theme the theme for the podcast. Oh, John absolutely did it. Absolutely. That was one of my just like happiest, most exciting moments is that we were able to like super collaborate with the two things we love together in one. I love it. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, man. Y'all just 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 be good. Get a little nudge. Enjoy the sunshine. Until next time, y'all be blessed. Peace.